The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Lorraine Underwood speaking to you from the UK, and this week we're going to finish my RGB LED clock build. That's behind me. <laughs> Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. In my last video, I went through how to make this clock. So I adapted some 3D printed files. I had to play around with some diffusers. Go back and have a look at that video just to remind yourself of how we got to this point. Because from now on, we're going to be focusing on the code and the electronics of what board we're gonna to use to control the clock. Um, we had some help from the Element 14 community on this. So I put a poll out to see what people thought was the best board. Let's have a look at those results. So I put up a poll to make things easier. Um, it was between the Microbit, the Raspberry Pi. I didn't say W or anything, I just said Raspberry Pi. Arduino, again, I didn't specify a board, but this is the Uno. And just because it has been released the week my video went live, um, I put up the Raspberry Pi Pico as another option. And what's great with these RGB LEDs is that it will work with all of these boards. So it's not a matter of will they work with the board? The answer is yes to all of them. And here's the result. So I think because it was brand new that week, everyone was really excited by it. It was free in a magazine. The Raspberry Pi Pico won the day. Um, I'll go through the pros and cons of each board that I feel and tell you my decision. <laughs> the next one that was uh, voted for was the Microbit and I'm really surprised by this. So I see the Microbit as an educational board. I don't think it's, I, I didn't think that it had really entered the kind of maker zone, you know, like makers weren't using it as a board. So to see people on the Element 14 community vote for Microbit really surprised me. I thought Arduino would win hands down here, but maybe that just shows the kind of people who are following my um, thread, because I'm an educator, I'm someone who uses Microbit a lot. But yeah, that was a nice surprise to see Microbit come in second. Then third, we had the Arduino, good old Arduino. And then last, we just had the Raspberry Pi. Again, I'm surprised, I thought my, yeah, I thought Arduino would be first. I thought Raspberry Pi would be second. I had a feeling though the Pico would do well because it was so new and everyone was really excited by it. So that's what you guys voted for. Um, actually, I'm gonna go with your vote. So I'm gonna use the Pico um, because it has a real time clock inside it. So that's kind of the only reason I would go for this board because it doesn't connect to the internet. So I'm gonna use the real time clock and then I'm gonna connect some buttons to it as well. I'll show you that in a minute. But I'm also gonna have a go at the Microbit. Now, the Microbit doesn't have a real time clock and it doesn't have the internet, but I will explain why I'm choosing Microbit. I'm actually choosing Microbit for a second clock that I've made. So I'm making two clocks. Um, I've made two clocks. I'm just gonna code up two clocks using these two boards. So how I feel um, the pros and cons of each device are Microbit, I've just mentioned it, it has no internet, it has uh, no real-time clock, but just ease of use. In my demo from the last video, it was a microbit running the numbers because it was just easy. You know, you just plug it into the internet, code it through make code. I even coded it in blocks, just so it was just so fast and so easy to get going on like some sample code. Uh, the microbit is just the board that I grab. Crocodile clips, easy peasy, ready to go. Um, the Pico, I've not actually had a play with yet, so this is gonna be my first time playing with this. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see what we do. Obviously the disadvantage is there's no internet, so we can't get like international times, but it does have a real time clock on it and it will ha has pins, which is obviously advantage over the micro bit. Um, pins are just easier to deal with. Arduino, so glad this didn't win. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just don't like it. Um, I don't like the IDLE. le um, I don't like the programming environment, I don't like the language, I don't like C. I will not throw this anywhere, I don't want to offend anyone, but I'm so glad Arduino did not win then. And Raspberry Pi, um, you know, powerful board, it's got Wi-Fi on it, it's got all the pins that you need. 
It's kind of overkill though for this project. So having to waste an SD card on a clock um, seems a bit silly. So yeah, I'm in the past, I might have gone for the, for the Raspberry Pi W0, but we have so many new options today that we're gonna try them. Let me show you the new clock though. So this is the second clock that I've made. I'll show you in a minute next to the big clock, um, the size difference. So this is a lot smaller and I've used different um, lights here. So in the big clock, I've used WS28126Bs, which I've just bought from eBay. Um, they're quite cheap to buy and they're easy to cut and to solder. And I found that they work with all kinds of boards. On this, we have the official Neopixels from Adafruit. So these are really tightly um, put together. They're very stiff boards. You really do need a proper scissors to cut through them. And they are tiny. <laughs> so let me show you the two clocks um, side by side. So that's kind of comparing the two different sizes. This is a gift for a friend, this clock. So I thought I'd do it kind of more normal size rather than having something a bit too big in a normal size house. So this one is going to my friend and I'm gonna use the micro bit to code the smaller one and the Pico is gonna co code the bigger one. And we both have different uses for these clocks. So mine, it's gonna be a clock, but also a stopwatch. Hers is gonna be a clock, but it needs international times on it. Um, so we're going to add some buttons and um, so it'll just switch the time that she wants and add buttons to mine as well so we can stop and start the stopwatch and yeah so we're gonna have to design them now. So I'm thinking of arcade buttons for both clocks because everyone loves arcade buttons. I've got like even mini ones for the mini clock and, and big ones for the, for the main clock. So on my main clock I'm thinking of just putting them here um, at the front putting the wires through and around to where the board will sit. But on my friend's clock, I obviously can't do that because I want it all to be one piece that I just give to her. Let me show you my friend's clock. This is the back of the clock. So all the wires just go through to the back. And I'm thinking maybe I should have another board on here so it doesn't get snagged on the wall when she's putting it on. So maybe like a backing board or something like that. But the buttons will go through here. And I'm thinking I'll leave the micro bit on the front because that gives you extra buttons and it kind of, I don't know, it adds to the kind of geekiness of the clock that you'd be able to see the board. So I don't want to hide the micro bit on the back. So I'll have to bring these wires back to the front. Ooh, a few more things have fallen off. <laughs> so this is my clock. So my clock is going to be a stopwatch. So I'm going to have four buttons. I'm going to have two here and kind of halfway to here leave that gap there um, we're gonna have start stop reset is that one and then we're gonna have minute and seconds these two so I exercise in minutes and seconds not in hours so I'll come up to the clock I'll press you know I need to do two minutes so I tap tap and then I press start and the clock the stopwatch should start counting down from two minutes now, why do I need a stopwatch? Let me show you why. Something you should know about me is that I am really very, very lazy. This is true when it comes to exercise. If I am counting in my head, I will not count properly. So this is why I need a big clock on the wall counting down for me, telling me exactly how many minutes, how many seconds are left. For the next clock then, we're going to just have four buttons, three or four buttons for the time zones. So my friend works in the UK and that's gonna be her button to come back to. So I think that'll be our center button. And I think maybe she only has two countries that she wants to know the times for. So we've got the Hong Kong and the USA. So say they were her countries. So that would just be three buttons. I wanna try and keep it symmetrical. So have one in the middle or have two either side. Um, the wiring will go through the board and it will come out to the micro bit, which will be up here. So I'm trying to keep this as neat as possible because this is a gift to someone else. Does anyone else have problems making design decisions for projects that are not yours? You know, they're not gonna end up in your house. So it doesn't matter what they look like. This is the one that I'm probably gonna spend a bit more time thinking about and being careful with because it's a gift. 
Subscribe to the E14 Community Twitch channel for our live monthly project review, where you can connect with our hosts and learn about cool electronics projects. Maybe you'll even see something you would like to build. Subscribe now! So I just wanted to show you I'm having huge problems with the microbit board um, connecting buttons and getting the bu buttons to be recognized on the back of this board in both MicroPython and MakeCode. I'm going to do a whole video on this. Um, watch out for it on the Element 14 community. But let's just skip that and show you what I did. All my lovely little plans, all my little drawings went completely out of the window when I started to try and code the microbit in MicroPython. Let me show you my solution. So the idea was that these would be on the clock itself and you would press these to change the time to a different time zone. But thinking on, and because of the problems I had with the pins on the RTC board, you don't want to get up out of your chair to check the time in Hong Kong. You know, you could just Google it then if it's going to be that much effort. So my idea now is to attach these to another micro bit and send a radio message to so send like a wireless message. And I've got this perfect box that the micro bit fits in. So I'm going to drill some holes and put these buttons on. We do have four time zones um, and look how gutting this is. So we're kind of going for a rainbow theme, but this is the only size yellow button I have. So I don't have a, a mini yellow button. I don't think four big buttons will fit on here. So it's going to be, oh, it's going to be so annoying that it's going to go red, black blue and green. Oh god, I think I might have to go buy a yellow button. Ah. So I'm going to wire these buttons up using this kind of um, spade connector. So I chopped a jumper wire, one end was female, and I chopped the other end off and then I crimped these on and these are great for these arcade buttons. So they just go on like that. They're called spade connectors and it's a really, really solid connection and then you can just connect that to the pin of the breakout board, the micro bit. So I've got a jumper wire, I chopped off one end and I'm just gonna bend over this end because it's quite thin and I find you need to do that. So I'm gonna put it in the spade connector, so it's just sticking out a little bit and I'm gonna use this massive tool. Um, you can use like a normal pliers if you have wrists of steel, um, but I don't, so let me see. <laughs> it's so heavy. Can you hear that? It's a great sound. I could do this all day actually and just give it a little tug, make sure that's in. And there is your wire. So I need eight of these. So there's all our buttons and cables. Before you put them onto the button, just give it a squish with um, a pair of pliers so it's nice and snug. Um, otherwise it tends to slip off. So I'm going to wire it onto a micro bit connected to an edge connector. It's quite late, but I just wanted to show you this because I just got it working. Um, so that's the clock and you just saw it's um, it's counting like normal. And this is the remote over here. So this is not plugged into the clock. And I'm going to press the red button and that should be the time in Pittsburgh compared to the UK. So it's 1am here in the UK. And it's 10 past 8 in Pittsburgh. <laughs> And next, um, let's do the last one, which is Hong Kong. And it's 9 a.m. in Hong Kong, so they're eight hours ahead. And it goes blue, did you see? <laughs> Just trying to make it that bit more funky. So this clock is visible in normal light and in daylight, but it's just difficult to film. So turn the lights off so you can see it much better. Um, can you still see the remote? So here's the remote. This is the clock that's a gift to my friend who wants international time zones. So I'm going to press red, which will give her the time zone in Pennsylvania for her colleague who works there. So it's 3 a.m. in Pennsylvania, so probably don't want to give her a call. And then here's Hong Kong. So it's 4 p.m. in Hong Kong. I'll turn the lights on and show you everything a bit closer. So here's the clock with the micro bit on it. So I couldn't get the micro bit to face this way. It would just be sticking out too much. Um, so it is facing to the side, uh, which I think is better than up or down, so you can kind of see it. 
The wire is just going into the back of this board and will also lead um, a power wire. We could power it through this connection here um, and that would power everything and I think that would be less weird looking as well. So I'm looking at going to look at power adapters for this. So here's our remote. So the remote is not plugged into this board, it's just plugged into the wall behind it. But it could run off a battery or your laptop. These are the, the four buttons. <laughs> no yellow. Oh, I could cry. And there's the wiring inside. So that's both of my clocks done which is a total lie because when is a project ever fully done? This one has to be done because it's a gift. So the one thing I would add to this project is maybe a rotary um, button, you know, like a twirly button to the remote so you can set the time easier. Now it's not really a problem here with the Katronic board because if you unplug this, the RTC uh, keeps track because it's got a CR2 battery on it. So that's not a problem. The, the Pico is more of a problem, uh, which is why I can't really use it as a, what I intended to. It's not really going to be an exercise stopwatch. I can't unplug it because it won't keep track of time. I'll plug it back in again and it'll still say 2038, even though I've been exercising for an hour. So that's, that's a bit of a pain. I might try and build a board for that, a, like adapter, like a hat for the Pico that adds a, like a little CR2 battery that keeps a little bit of power on the board to keep the RTC going, keep track of time. I'd love to hear what you think, your opinions, what you feel I could have done better with these clocks, what you, what you really liked about the clocks as well, you know, give me the pros as well as the cons. Also there will all be code for both of these boards, the 3D printed files, the laser cut files, and a shopping list of where you can buy everything you need to build both clocks. I can't wait to see you there at element14.com forward slash presents. Mm -hmm.